Hello everyone, it's Fyro here. So welcome to a new redstone tutorial on another 1.15.2 multi-item categorizer. So a, lot, a few weeks ago, I created a, um, a very similar design like this. So essentially, it would sort items in an input chest and it would be sorted into its own categories. So here you can sort red components for stuff like this, eggs, glass, non-stack items, and yeah, so that design was not actually not as reliable as this new one I've created. So the last one was a lot bigger and a lot more messy, if you will. And if you look over here, you can see the size has been toned down massively compared to the previous design. And the modules as well are also kind of compacted. So I've shaved off an entire block on this side. And here I've made it so this design mainframe is only four wide. So generally this is a lot more lag efficient and a lot cheaper. Unfortunately, that does mean that the building process is a lot more complicated. It is, it is faster and it is cheaper, but there are some tactics I've used that kind of exploit the mechanics of minecarts and rails that might be a little difficult to comprehend at first. So this new design fixes a bunch of problems that the old design had previously. So a problem in the previous design that was a pretty big problem is that non-stackable items wouldn't be able to reach the end of the hopper line because here you see this is where minecart will be sent back if it's detected as a non-stackable item. So if I just set in like a minecart chest for example, and you can see it will start to send it, then I'll immediately send it back. But the problem is obviously because that's way too fast for the minecart. So what's gonna happen is that it takes too long for the non-stackable item to go through this hopper line and reach the end right here. So if I was to do something like this and dealing with, you know, minecart reaching the end of the line too fast, I have this delay circuit right here, but obviously it doesn't go through that delay circuit. So let's say I throw in the same stackable item, but then I put like emeralds. And emeralds is in this category right here of valuables right now. So if we just look right now, it will probably already have taken the emeralds out, yeah. So the emeralds have been taken out and they're going to be sorted to this column, right? But here you can see the minecart actually unlocks this comparator too fast before the unstackable item can reach this column. So the minecart just actually ends up in this category instead of the unstackable item category. And you can see the emeralds are being filled in right now. And overall, this design is just a lot faster due to being so compact. The minecart has a lot less space to travel through, and therefore it does make the sorting a lot faster than the previous one. So if I just dump some glass in here, the hopper speed is still the same. That's not really anything that I can change. But it can sort through the columns a lot faster and be unloaded like as soon as it leaves the modules. And you can hear the drop clicking and the glass is being sorted. The mainframe has a 10 by four by seven volume, but including these three blocks here at the top. This is just kind of like an extension from the redstone, but the main circuitry does fit inside this volume. The design size is less than half the old design and it uses the exact same mechanics and the exact same concept. So if you want to check out how the design works, you can go to my previous video in the link in the description and check out. If you have any questions, be sure to let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer as many as I can. And let's move on with the tutorial. Alright, so in this chest, I have a list of all the materials you're going to need. So you're going to need 67 blocks of your choice. You're going to need 6 transparent blocks, which means you can use glass, slabs, or anything you can put rest of components on top of. You're also going to need three chests, you're going to need two fence gates, 23 observers, 13 rest on dust, 10 comparators, 10 rest on torches, 6 repeaters. And here you can also see I have a rest on torch labeled rail curved left and rail curved right. So there's a, there's a section where there is a rail that curves in a certain direction. And if your rail is curved right, you're going to need a repeater. And if your rail is curved left, 
it's, you're gonna need to rest on torch. And I'm gonna show you where that rail is curved later on. But you're also gonna need a rest on block. You're gonna need 20 hoppers, 7 droppers, 2 sticky pistons, 20 powered rails, 12 regular rails, 3 detector rails, a hopper minecart, and you're gonna need at least 70 junk items that we're gonna just put in hoppers. You also need 10 non stackable items and preferably make them all the same so that it's easier to work with. Alright, so here I've laid out a 4x10 area for our mainframe, and here we're going to be building our modules later on. Right now we're just going to start with the mainframe because this is where everything happens. Alright, so we're going to start right here again in the bottom left corner. You're going to go 4 blocks out, so 1, 2, 3, 4. And you're going to build 5 blocks up, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then right here, you're just going to break these two blocks. You're going to put two blocks on the sides of these top two blocks right here. And just break these. You're going to place the middle block here with glass. And here is where you're going to be put chest. So we're just going to put a double chest on top of this block and this block. And make sure this double chest is below this glass block so that the hogger minecart can actually access it. And from this glass block, we're going to go on this side, we're going to place a solid block, glass block, and then another solid block. You're going to get a dropper, and you're going to place three of them facing up from this glass block. So one, two, three, you're going to get a hopper, and right here, have a hopper going into this bottom dropper. Now on the left of this hopper, you're going to have a block here two more blocks out so you have three blocks in a line and you're gonna dip down right here one block and break that and then just have a block right here actually no this is gonna be a glass block and right here on this corner block you're gonna place a block right here all right so this is gonna be your bottom rail line and once the minecart picks the items from this chest it's gonna send it on this line so we need to actually place the rails right now. So right now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to break this block temporarily. Place a temporary rail here. And then on this class block, place a detector rail. Then place a powered rail. Detector rail. Regular rail. And then regular rails along this entire line here. Just like so. And on this dip, you're going to place two powered rails. And right here, you're going to place another powered rail like this. Alright, and now we're going to get a fence gate. On top of this power rail, you're going to place it facing this direction towards the chest. So that the minecart, when we place it on this rail here, it won't fall down. So now we're actually going to place our minecart hopper. So just like the last system, you're going to need 3 non-stackable items and five or 59 junk items. And you're going to place them like so in that minecart, so you're going to place them in the second, third, and fourth slot. And then you're going to place your 59 junk items in here. And make sure it's named something obscure, so that anything that gets dumped in this chest won't come in contact with these items right here. And we need this first slot empty so that items will be able to be picked up from this slot only. Alright, now from this glass block, you're going to place a block here. And a block next to it on the left like that and on this tech rail you're going to place a block next to it with a hopper next to this block and you're just going to put a non-stackable item of any kind so i'm just going to put a wooden sword act and you need four of them inside of this hopper so that right here this comparator right now is outputting a signal strength of 12 just like that if you look on the right it says targeted block redstone wire and then East, North, None, and then Power 12. So that's what we want from this hopper output. And now we're just going to place a comparator out from this minecart hopper. If we place it out here, you can see currently it's not powered. Make sure none of these are in subtract mode. Alright, so now we're going to place a block in front of the comparator. We're going to have a torch here on the side so that the comparator is going to power the torch. We're going to have a hopper clock on top. So we're just going to place a hopper here, 
hopper going into this hopper, break that hopper, and then have a hopper going into this hopper so that they're connected. Now you're going to put 8 items of any kind, it doesn't matter if named or not, into this hopper. Either way, if you put in this hopper, they're going to be sent to this one anyway, so it doesn't matter. And now from this rest on torch, you're going to place a block on the left. But from the hopper, you're going to have a comparator output. That's going to be going into a block like so, with a torch on the left of the block. And that torch is going to be going into a repeater, and that repeater is going to be going into a block like that. So that's going to be your hopper loader. So once at least one item gets up to this minecart hopper, it will send the minecart on its way to the sorting. Alright, so the next part we're going to build, we're going to go down here, put the block of the repeater on top, we're going to dip down like so, and break that. You're going to place a rest of the going up from it, that's going to be going into a block like so. You're going to place two blocks on these sides, so one, two, with the rest of dust on top. And then here you're going to grab a glass block, and then place a torch on top. Now this doesn't really matter if it's a glass block or not, I just prefer to keep it a glass block because mobs can't spawn on it. So we're going to be using a glass block for that. And right down here in the middle block, you're going to go down two blocks, so one, two. You're going to break that, put the rest of dust on top with the rest of the torch on the side. And now here, you're going to place a block away from the corner, just like that, with the rest of dust on top. That's going to be going into a block. And you're going to go down here again, place a rest on repeater facing out from the rest of dust. So it's going to be on 4 6 delay. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's going to be going into a block. Now down here, you're going to be Two powered rails like that. You're gonna grab an observer. And on this powered rail on the left, place it down facing up like so. So that this dropper will be powered if we update that. Okay, so now we're gonna go over here on this side. And before I mentioned that we have a rail that depends on the curve, this rail right here the intersection, if you just pick and replace it, and this this is the rail that we have to kind of look at. So right now we're just going to build uh, a non-stackable item check. So right here we're going to place a block, you're going to place two blocks up and break that, have a comparator facing out into this block right here, and then you're going to place a block on this block with the rail and the dip, like that. And then you're going to have a block in front of it. So before we mentioned about the rail curvature, right? So if you look here on this rail right here, you need to pay attention. If the rail, if you place it, is it default curving right or is it curving left? So right now, my rail is curved right, which means I need to use the repeater. So I'm going to show you how to do both. But right now, this one is right. So I'm going to show you if the rail is curved right here. So right here on the block, you're going to place a block here with the rest of dust on top. You're going to go over here on this side with the rest of dust on the bottom here. And then we're going to have a repeater facing out from the rest of dust going into a block with the rest of torch on top. So what we want here is that the rail has to be curved left for the design to work. So, if you can see here, if we unpower it, it's curved right, but if you power this with a torch, it's curved to left. So, but for other directions, so say if we do it like this, if we place it again, the rail will curve left automatically if we, like, break it and replace it. So, I'm going to show you how to build it if the rail is curved left now. So here I have it where the rail is automatically curved left. So I have the same setup here as we did before. And we're just going to go right here on the side. So we have the same block here with the rest of dust on top. But right here, you're just going to get a rest on torch. You're going to place it here on the side of the block with the rest of dust going out into a block with the rest of torch on top. So right now, this torch is unpowered and the rail is curved left. Now the next thing you want to do is grab a lot of observers because you're going to be using them. So 
here from this comparator that's going into the middle block, we're going to have an observer facing out from here into this block right there. We're going to have that going up. And then we're going to be going up again. It's going to be going up from this observer right here. And two observers from this observer pointing into the dropper like that. And now over here on the gate, we're going to have an observer facing up. That's going to be going into a block with a hopper, an observer, and a block on top. Alright, so now we're going to build our hopper on motor. So the minecart, say we, it's been sorted through its, all the categories, and now it has to dump all the items into the sorting system. So this is the system where we allow the hopper to unload all the items while maintaining this setup right here. So here on the observer, we're going to have a dropper facing up, then two more droppers facing up. So we have three droppers in total. And then right here, on top of this dropper, you're going to have a hopper going into this dropper right there. And then you're going to have a hopper going into this hopper right here. And back down here, you're going to have a chest. Place a temporary block there. Place a chest right here on the side, like that. Then have a hopper going into the chest right there. And just have a block beneath the hopper. So, I'm just going to build a rail line real quick going into this hopper because we want the minecart to be on this hopper when it's unloading the items. So I'm going to have a block here temporarily and then I'm going to go four blocks out. So one, two, three, four. Break that for now. And then over here, you're going to dip down a block, break that, place a block next to it, and then place a block going up diagonally like that. Just break that. And now back here on the same block, we're going to dip down two blocks, so one, two, and then just break the block. We're also going to be placing a block here on the side, and then we're going to place our rails on top. So we're going to have two regular rails on these bottom blocks right there. You're going to have two powered rails on these middle blocks like that, and then just have rails along the top of all of these, like so. And now, we're going to have to place a powered rail here, but it's going to be placed in a certain direction. So we need the rail to be facing straight forward from there, but if we place it here, you can see it connects to this one. And we don't want that to happen. So what we're going to do, we're going to place a temporary block right here, place a temporary rail there, and then facing in this direction, we're going to have a powered rail like that, so that the powered rail isn't connected to this rail then just break these two. And right here on the side, you're going to have a block right there so that the minecart can be pushed forward. So now we're going to build some actual circuitry. So right here, from this middle hopper, you're going to have a block next to it. You're going to go down two blocks from here, so one, two. Then have a block here, and then just break that. You're going to grab a resto comparator, like so, and then have it going into this block right there. Now right here, you're going to have a temporary block there, with a glass block beneath it, and just break that. Place a block of quartz on top of that. And then a regular block right here, with a comparator going into the comparator. Get a hopper, and then put one non-stackable item inside of it. So that this comparator will be going into this comparator right here just have redstone dust running along all of these blocks like so with the redstone dust going into a block and then right here on the block here place a block and then a redstone repeater going into this block right there on 4 ticks delay now on this side you're gonna have three blocks going out this direction so one two three and then place redstone dust on the side block, so here and here. Then you're gonna grab a repeater, have it going out in this direction, to delay, have a rest on torch, like so, and then place it right here on the side. Now in this hopper, you're gonna have a, a non-stackable item right here. And then make sure it doesn't go into this chest because this hopper has to be locked. All right, so now over here on the side of the chest, going to have block here and then you're going to have 
um, a hot dropper right here facing up and you're gonna have a temporary block there and grab a hopper and then have the hopper going into this block like that and then a hopper going into this dropper and then you're gonna grab an observer like so have it facing down into a block like so and you're gonna have rails right here so that once the minecart is done unloading the items it'll be pushed down and they're sent back to the beginning um, so over here, you're gonna have a detect. You're gonna have a two card rails here and a detector rail right there. But the, the rails have to be once again they have to be placed in a certain direction. So right now we're just gonna break this temporarily. You're gonna have a powered rail or a temporary rail of any kind here on the top. You're gonna have this power rail facing up like so. And now over here on the observer. You're gonna have a temporary block here and a block on the side. Break that. Another temporary rail on the top. And a detector rail. So these two are gonna be facing up. And then right here, you're just gonna have a powered rail right here on top of the hopper. And now you can just break all these temporary rails. You can place a block right here. And then break that rail as well. Then just put your hopper going back into the chest with the non stackable item inside. So this is gonna be your it's gonna be your entire rail setup. Alright. So now we're just gonna build the last thing actually. We're gonna build a timer. So the timer basically helps it so that the the hoppers that are being sorted through the system going in a hopper line can actually reach their destination before the minecart sends the next set of items through. So I'm gonna have another fence gate right here on top of the powered rail. And I'm gonna have a block on top. So going back here with the observer in the block beneath it, you're gonna grab a sticky piston, like so, and you're gonna have it facing out from this direction, like that. And you're gonna have a redstone block, and it's gonna be going so we're gonna have a temporary block here and a redstone block on the side. So make sure this redstone block is on the outside. It can't be here. It has to be here. It has to be here. Yeah. And then you're gonna have a hopper clock on top. So you're gonna have a temporary hopper here. There's a hopper going into it, like that, and have a hopper going into that. Alright, now items in the hopper. So the items in the hopper basically is how long you want delay from this hopper minecart to be and return to the start, if that makes any sense. So it's gonna be the amount of time it takes for the hopper to return to the start. And the amount of items you need is you're gonna need three, at least three, right? And then for every module you have, you're gonna add one item. So if I have five modules, I'm gonna have five items. So one, two, three, four, five. If I have, let's say, 16 modules, I'll have 16, so I'll have 19 because it's 3 plus 16, so like that. So th this would mean I have 16 modules. So I'm just going to have 5 modules to keep it simple, so I'm going to have 8 items inside. Alright, now, going over here on this side, what you're going to do is you're going to have a block here. The resto comparator on top right into this comparator right here. And just another side note, um, with this comparator, if you have the rest on torch design over here on the side, you're gonna have to put this comparator in subtract mode. But if you have the repeater, then you're gonna then you can't have that subtractive mode. It has to be normal. Okay, so actually you're gonna this is meant to be an observer. So you're going to have the observer facing down, not a block, and the compared to going into it. And then you're going to have a block here on the bottom, and have a block, two blocks out from here, with a repeater going into that block, and three ticks delay, so one, two, three. And then you're going to have two redstone dusts running along this line, going into a block, and you're going to have a redstone torch on top, like so. Now to power this fence gate, as the timers run out, we're gonna have an observer line going into that fence gate. So we're gonna have 
an observer going up from the comparator here. I'm gonna have it facing outwards. And then gonna be facing left from the observer, going up, and then left again, and up again, and then right here into this block. So it's gonna be like a staircase into the block. If we update it, you can see the gate opens. The last thing we want to do is you want to be able to activate this top drop evader. So that's going to be really simple. So right here on the dropper, we're going to have a block on the side, the comparator facing out. Then on the, on the left of the comparator, you're going to have an observer facing out from there, going into a block like so, with the sticky piston on top facing backwards. And then over here in this direction, you're going to have an observer right here. And here on the back, you're going to have an observer facing into the dropper. So if I can uh, actually place it correctly. That, right? So if we if we quickly take that, the dropper data will activate because you have an observer clock right here. And then if we pull it back, then it's going to deactivate. And now we're just going to build the hopper line going into our modules. So we're going to be going here, so right here in this power drill, you're going to place a block on top, place a block on the side, then temporary block there, and block next to it, just break that, and break all these as well. And you're literally just going to have a hopper line running into this block, so just like that. So the hoppers will be going all the way into here, let's break this. And along this entire hopper line, you're going to have power rails along the entire top. Just like that. And then there you go. We've done our mainframe. So there's some things I forgot to do because I'm dumb. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, so we have to power uh, the power rails from the mainframe. Um, so we have to power this one first. So I'm just going to grab a glass block here. And just have a torch powering these rails right there. And over here, we have to power this powered rail and this powered rail. And we also have to connect uh, this rail line over to here. So what we have to do is we have to place two blocks here on the bottom. We're going to have a powered rail right here. And this is going to connect that one. We'll get to that later. And just have a regular rail here. All right, so now we're just going to have a regular rail right here. We're going to break this hopper for now. And you're gonna have a um, rail on top. You're gonna break that. Place the power rail again. Break that again. Then replace your hopper as well. Put the sword inside. And replace the observer as well. And finally, over here, you're just gonna have a repeater going out from this block right here on three fixed delay. So one, two, three. With an observer facing up like so. And last but not least, put a non stackable item in this hopper right here. Alright, so now we're going to build our modules. So the modules I have made to be more compact, so it takes up less space. But it's a tiny bit more expensive. It's just one extra block, so it's not that big of a deal. So if you look in this chest right here, you can see the list of items we need. So here you're going to need seven solid blocks, a glass block or a transparent block, two chests, three rest of dust, two comparators, an observer, two droppers, two hoppers, and two powered rails. You're also going to need just one item of any kind, it doesn't matter. And then you're going to need three non-stackable items, or you can alternatively have 64 of any item, and 55 of the same item. And make sure to name these differently, as you can see. So, we, we name these junk item, right? You can't name the items in the modules junk item, it has to be named something different. So try and name something as obscure as possible so that it doesn't come in contact with any other item. So once again, I'm going to show you how to build just one module and then you can replicate it on all the other sides. They're really simple to make so it shouldn't take a lot of time. And if you're building this in survival, I suggest you do all, all the modules at once instead of one module and then another module. Just do one step at a time for every module and then you'll get it done a lot faster. So so we're going to go right here, we're going to have a block next to this with a rail on top, and then you're going to have a chest on top of that, with a chest on the side here. And then right here next to the powered rail, 
and we'll place a block. You're gonna have a rest of preparator facing put like so, and you're gonna have a block on top here and a block on top of the comparator like that. Then place rest on dust on the top of these two. And now right here on the right rest on dust, place an observer on the top there, with the block on top, like so. And grab your droppers, and then place one facing up like so. And then up here, place another dropper facing down into the dropper like that. So that these two are going to be going putting items inside of each other. And then in this bottom dropper, you're just going to have an item inside. Make sure it's just one item. It doesn't matter what item, put any item. And then right here on the dropper, you're going to have a block on the side. You're going to dip down the block like that. And then break that with the rest of the comparator facing out into here. So that this comparator right now is currently powered. And now you're just going to have a block of glass here on the top like so. With the rest of the dust on top. Another thing I forgot to mention, uh, right here on the powered rail, we have it so that we can activate all the droppers at once. So what we're going to do is we're going to have an observer facing out from this powered rail into a block like that. And the last thing we're going to do is you're just going to have a hopper on top here with the powered rail on the top of that. Now we're just going to build our line of chests. So let's say I want five double chests. Right here, this line of the comparator is as high as the chest can go. You can't have any chest higher than this. So you're going to have a double chest here. And let's say I want five double chests. So we're just going to have three, four, and one, two, three, four. All right, we got five double chests. And now, what I have to do is you just have a hopper going into each double chest. Just like this. Like so. And over here, we want a hopper on the top of this one, facing in this direction. So we're just going to have a temporary block here and a block on the side. Break that, and then have a hop point into that, just like so. And now we want to configure our chest here. So this chest is going to be the category of items we want. And let's say we want this category to be best of components, right? So what we need to do for every single chest need this for every single chest. So we want three non-stackable items and 55 obscure landed items, right? And alternatively, you can also have 64 of each item. And the reason we have this exact amount of items is if we press F3 and we look at this rest on this right here. You can see on the right, it says targeted block, rest on wire, east none, north up, and power two. We want this to have a power of 2, and we want this redstone to have a power of 1. And the reason we want that is so that when we take exactly one item out, then you can see this redstone is no longer powered. This one on the right, you can see it has a power of 1. So, if you want certain, if you want certain items, all you have to do is put at least one of the item you want in that category. So what I like to do is I like to spread them out like so. And they just have five in the top. And that just makes it easier because I could just take an item out and put an item in. So the way I want to categorize it, first we want to choose our items. So let's say I want rest on dust, rest on repeater, comparator, rest on block, or observer, doesn't matter. And all you gotta do is for each item, you take out one item and then put the item you want categorized in. So then now this category will automatically sort rest and dust. And if we want repeaters, we can just take one out and then put a repeater in. Now it's gonna sort repeaters. So let's just put the rest in like so. And now it's gonna sort these five items. And you can keep adding as many as you want. You can have up to 54 in each double chest. Alright, so now I want to go over how to sort or to configure items that stack up to 16. So here in this chest, we have our default configuration. And here we have three items that all stack up to 16. And for every item that stacks to 16, we want to take out four of any item. 
so just one, two, three, four, and then you put one in. And then if I put another one in, you take out four, you put it in. Oh, I took that out by accident. Um, and yeah, and then you just put another one, take out another four, like so. And then you can also you can also just put like any other item in, just replace the stick with that, and it'll still work the same way. All right, so now I'm just gonna replicate each module. I said I was gonna have five modules, so I'm just gonna build another four, and they'll be ha and they'll have their own categories as well. So yeah, very bad. Alright, so I've finished my five modules, and as you can see, I've created my own categories down here. So this one, the first one, is redstone components. It's gonna sort these five items. This one sorts items that stack up to 16, so eggs, snowballs, and pearls. And here we have planks, here we have rails, and here we just have valuables. Now before we get to anything, we have to actually connect these back rails here at the ends. So, all you gotta do is really simple. You're gonna have a block here. You're gonna place a block on top. Two blocks out. Block on top there. Just break that. And temper block there. Block on the side. Just break that. And then just have rails on top of every block. And we gotta also power the rails, obviously. Just like that. So, as you can see, right now, these powered rails are powered. But they can't. If it's too long, then they won't be powered. The problem with these modules is that there's really no way to actually power them from inside here. So to power these power rails on this line, so the previous design was I kind of had an issue. You literally could not power it anyway without interfering with anything else. So here I have an alternate design, which is a lot more expensive. It uses an extra rest on dust, an extra observer. But, as you can see, now we actually have access to power the rail, so I can just replace this bottom block here with the comparator. And you can see now the rails are actually powered. So if that actually becomes a problem, then use this design instead. I kind of show you how it works. And up here, I've also changed it because you need an extra observer to power this line here. So, yeah. It's not the best. But if you gotta power the rails, you gotta use the design. Alright, so now that we got that out of the way, um, we can actually start giving it a test. So here I have items in every single category, and all we gotta do is just dump them in. So we're gonna start off with emeralds, and you can see the minecart is gonna be sent. You can see it's gonna be sorting through the line, and this comparator becomes unpowered. So, if you look down here, you can see at 4 emeralds, the 4 emeralds have been sorted. And the next item, if I remember correctly, I think it was 5 repeaters. So, at this column right here, this column was repeaters, or rest of components anyway. And the repeaters are being sent through right now. So, if we look here, and every chest, we can see all the items have actually been sorted into their categories. So this is so much faster than the previous design, because obviously it's smaller, and it does take up a lot less space, and it is less laggy. Obviously the alternate design is a little bit more laggy, because you got the extra rest on dust here that causes block updates and everything, but overall, I'd say it's a pretty reliable design and a lot more efficient than the previous one. Right, so the last thing I want to cover is our non-stackable item filter. So our non-stackable item filter will have its own separate circuit from the modules, and the rest of the columns from that that point on will just be not will just be miscellaneous items. So let's say this column here will be non-stackable items. So we just have a chest, and then we have our hop into the chest and everything like that. Right, so this is going to be non-stackable items, right? And now we're going to have our column here. We're just going to have one column for now for miscellaneous items, but you can have as many as you want. So I'm just going to have one column. 
so let's just place our chest there, and then our hoppers there. And obviously we gotta place the hoppers here on top of going into them. Alright, so to build our non-stackable item filter is really easy. So all we gotta do is right here on this hopper, we're just gonna have a block here with a comparator facing out, like so. We're gonna have a block right here, and then a transfer block right here, and block there. So we kind of have like a, a reverse L shape, and we just have to put rest and rest along this entire line, like so. And what we gotta do is right here, we're gonna place a rest on torch, and then at the bottom here, we're gonna go down two blocks, break like that, and we're gonna have a transparent block there, and any block right here. You're just going to place two rest and dust on top, and then you're going to grab your repeater going into this block right here. So that's basically your non-stackable item filter. So any item that outputs a single strength uh, that's at least three, well it can't be at least three, can't be greater than three anyway, but non-stackable item will immediately unlock this bottom hopper right here and be sorted into this category. Any other item will just end up going into this category or any other further category. So if we give it a quick test, so I'm just gonna use a water bucket as a non-stackable item, and we're gonna grab a uh, light blue stained glass, which is also it's it's not part of any category here, so it's gonna end up in the miscellaneous category, right? So we just gotta put them all in right now. You can see the minecart is going through a timer and it's going to be sent on its way. So a non-stackable item doesn't fit the category for any of these so it's not going to be sorted through. But you can see right there the water bucket's been sorted in the non-stackable item category and now it's going to send the light boost to the class. And once again, this fit any category, it's going to go along this entire line here and end up in this chest right there. Alright so I want to show you 1.16 fix because as we all know this original design won't work because anything like this if this custom dust is powered this block will also be powered on the side so we have to kind of change it up a bit and right here I've kind of used a design again from my Zuma games because he's kind of the inspiration for all this um, yeah, so here you can see we have two extra comparators, and they're just carrying on the signal strength. So here we have a signal strength of two. This is one, and the comparator brings on the signal strength again of one right there, so that this block becomes powered. And right here, I've used an another extra line of observers with alternating rails with powered and activated rails, so that it once again becomes tileable. And obviously, it's a lot larger, it extends two blocks outwards, and it's more expensive. So, if you're looking into 1.16 and you want to build this, you're going to need a lot more resources if you're going to build large designs like this. So, try, try not to build as many if you can, but yeah, this is kind of the only option we have. It's not really the most optimal, but this is kind of what we have to work with. So I'm going to show you how to do an add-on, which I didn't include in the previous design, which is how to put your input chest where you want it. So what we're going to do is we're going to be using a minecart chest, and we're going to have a rail line going from the minecart chest into this chest. So I'm going to make a rail line from here. And like, let's just, let's just say this is where we want our input chest. So we're just going to have our rail line, like so, and we're going to have a hopper up here with the chest on top. And right here is where we're going to have our minecart chest. So we want we want to have a hopper loader here, so when the chest is empty, the minecart will be sent on its way to this input chest. And once the minecart chest has dumped all the items into the input chest, it's going to be sent back. So we're going to be building a hopper loader. On this side and an unloader on this side. So to build our hopper loader, what we're gonna need is a redstone comparator, 
a sticky piston, an observer, which I'm gonna one right now, and a repeater. So how we're gonna build this, we're gonna go from this hopper right here, from this block, we're gonna have a comparator facing out. That's gonna be going down here into a sticky piston facing downwards like so. We're gonna grab an observer and we're gonna have to kind of place this carefully. So we're gonna have to place it backwards from the sticky piston head right there. And then from here, we're gonna go two blocks down from this block. So one, two, break like this. And then you're gonna grab a rest on repeater facing out from the observer like this. And then you're gonna have it on four ticks. So one, two, three, four. So that's your hop loader. Once you dump some items in, the chest will be emptied, and what's going to happen is that this piston will attract the observer, and it will allow the Minecraft to be sent on its way. So I'm actually just going to replace this with a rail, and we're going to power these powered rails so that the minecart can actually go on its way. So let's just send this back for now. And now we're going to build our hopper unloader. So now we're going to build our hopper unloader. This is a lot easier and a lot cheaper, so I have all the materials you need right here. And yeah, so we're going to start here on the outside chest, or the inside chest, the outside chest, that's important. And we're going to place a hop on top facing downwards. And we're going to have a power rail on top with a regular rail here on the side. And from this chest here, we're going to place a block there. And then grab a comparator facing out from the hopper. That comparator is going to be going into a block like so. With the rest and torch on top. It's going to be part of this block right here. And then we're just going to place a block next to the torch there, and a rest on uh, rest on top. And that's going to be your hopper unloader. So if we just dump, let's say, these items in, and once the chest empties, it's going to be sent on its way. And once the minecart empties, it gets sent back. And then you can just go through the sorting system just as normal. Alright, so I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope this sorter comes in helpful, and I'm sorry to all of you who built the previous design, but may maybe you can make the switch to this one, partially because it's a lot faster and smaller, and maybe you have any problems, you might want to try this one out instead. So yeah, thank you for watching, leave any feedback in the comments below, I'll be sure to re reply to all your comments, as many as I can, and yeah, we'll see you next time.